Hey everybody, Matt Siltola here with Avalanche Media alongside Dave Rohr with Northside Metrics on the other end. Hey Dave. Hola, how are you? Great. So another episode of this uh, awesome business of digital uh, podcast. What we're going to be talking about today is a question that you and I get a lot. And we've touched on it in other episodes, um, but we thought having a, a complete episode dedicated to, to talking about it and just what we see would be beneficial for everyone. Um, and that is, what kind of a budget should I have before talking to an agency? And so, um, Dave, why don't you start us off and, and let us know why um, this topic was important to you and why you felt like we should have a whole episode dedicated to it? Well, the short answer is it depends. <laughs> Not to be an SEO, but it depends. Um, you know, it depends on a lot of things. Um, and I, I get this question from referrals. I get it from other agencies that I'm working with. They're like, you know, what kind of budgets do you want to work with? What makes sense for you? And it's not really so much what makes sense for me, although to a certain extent it makes sense for me and it makes sense for you. And once you get to larger agencies, um, some people might have sticker shock, but you know, $2,500 a month just for SEO starts to be small. I know agencies that anything under 5,000 is too small. Mm -hmm. I also worked at an agency where if it wasn't in the at least 20 to $40,000 a month, at least, um, you were way too small. And there's a lot of agencies out there, a lot more than you would ever think. And they're working with Fortune 50, Fortune 100, Fortune 500. And they're talking, literally spending millions of dollars just on SEO every year. Yeah. Um, but if we're looking at the small to mid-sized business for PPC, so, you know, what is it, what is it, what's your spend? That usually is what determines what it'll cost you to have an agency manage. Um, and you can speak more to that than I do. I do a little bit of that. Um, social media, how many places am I going to be posting? How often do I need them to create content? What is the scope of the total engagement? Um, for conversion rate optimization type things, are they going to be, you know, if you're going to hire someone to help you with that, it, it will depend on do you, are you paying for the solutions, the optimizing type you know, tracking stuff, or are they doing it themselves? Is it just a consultant you're working with? Um, and then again, for SEO, you know, how do you, do you have an FTE, a full-time employee helping you? Are they spending 40 hours a week? At, you know, at that point, you probably almost need to hire someone. Yeah. Um, and is it on page, off page? What are they doing? Yeah, with, with um, you know, my thoughts on this, like when I'm thinking about, okay, what kind of a budget should, should I have? Uh, again, like, you know, I go back to, okay, so this particular individual that I'm thinking about, I know that they don't have a lot of money. And so I'm thinking, okay, you know, most of the, the again, the, the smaller examples on this scale would be like the HVAC technicians, the, the local plumbers, or, you know, the local dentists or whatever. You know, most of those that I'm talking to, when you're talking about what kind of a budget that they even have, you know, they're throwing around numbers like, well, 300 or 500 dollars a month or 700 or if I'm lucky maybe a thousand dollars a month and so then when I get that information then I start to think about okay well I know SEO wise you know 300 bucks isn't going to get them a whole lot okay I know PPC wise it's not going to get them a whole lot um, and, and so this is where you have to start deciding okay well maybe what we should do is use this, you know, use like one month of the budget to create some visual assets. And then the second part of the, you know, the second month, um, use that money to promote those digital assets on, you know, whether it be sponsorship programs through Facebook or, or uh, Instagram or, or Pinterest or whatever, depending on what kind of business that they're in. Um, but also, you know, really understanding, you know, where their money is going to, be spent, you know, the best because I'm thinking, okay, you know, if we're even talking PPC and we're having one of these agencies that, you know, only has 500 bucks or, you know, let's even say a thousand bucks a month, you know, most of the time just knowing our SEO or our, our PPC team, excuse me, um, you know, they're going to laugh. I mean, 
very rarely do we find an industry where it's not going to take a decent amount of budget for something like that to to happen. I mean, not to mention you have setup fees um, and then percentage of fees. You know, like, that's like with with uh, you know with our agency. You know, you're looking at anywhere from fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred um, just in setup fees, and then you have management fees. And obviously, management fees change depending on the kind of budget that you have. If there's someone that's spending you know, two hundred thousand dollars a month, they're going to be paying less of a percentage than someone that's, you know, that can't even barely pay, a, you know, a, a monthly minimum. Someone that doesn't even have the budget for a monthly minimum, and you know, so again, it goes back to let's figure out how much money you have and where that money could best be put. Because this is what I'll tell people all the time. You know, they're like, hey, I really think that I want to hire your agency. And I'm thinking, okay, well, let's talk about budget because I know you're a smaller business and not that I don't want to work with you, but let me help you figure out where that money is best spent because, you know, just engaging with us is going to be this month. Like, you know, like we, for example, uh, you know, you, you threw out some numbers there, Dave, but as a, as a company, uh, Avalanche, you know, we generally don't take on any SEO clients unless they're at least $2,500 a month. Yeah. And so what people don't realize is, you know, you got money that goes into tools for all the SEO stuff. You know, you tell these people, hey, you go pay for all these tools that we need to do this right for auditing, for monitoring, for, you know, everything that you use tools for. You know, are you going to want to pay that budget for these tools? No, you're not. Okay. Well, this is what's baked into your cost. You know, we got to do audits. We have to pay an account manager that's going to, you know, be dedicated to you. Anyway, you just you, you start to, to go through all of that and then you start to help them realize, OK, maybe I need to invest a little bit more. Maybe, you know, you talking with me helped me realize that, OK, I, you know, maybe the number I came up with originally was 500, but I actually could cut back on this one thing. And I digital marketing is really important and I could put 1500 into it. What would that get me or or whatever? But you have to have that conversation, you know, with them on. And again, this is where being ethical comes into play. But uh, again, you know, you get some people that will, you know, tell them, tell them whatever and say, hey, we'll do that. And then, you know, we got to deal with, with that side of it. But um, anyway, I think it just comes back to having a, having a, a good conversation with that business before really helping them, you know, figure out if they need to, to use an agency or not. Yeah, and I was just doing some quick math. A thousand dollars a month spent in PPC. We'll just say on average it's it's ten dollars a click, um, which might sound a lot for some people, but it just depends on your service. Um, there's one service that I know where um, I seven years ago it was fifteen to twenty five. And now the person that manages it says it's more like thirty-five to forty dollars a click now. Yep. So, and that's and during peak season for them, it probably reaches closer to fifty dollars a click. Well, I have this. Um, no, go ahead. Sorry. I was gonna say something. I if if your budget for PPC is a thousand dollars, and you're gonna spread that across, you know, a couple campaigns, some ad groups, and a, a fair amount of keywords. That literally can only get you a hundred clicks a month. That's only a hundred visitors. Yeah. And, and so you know you might not to say a thousand dollars can't be a lot, but in some verticals, you know if it's a dollar a click, much better, much yeah. easier. We get a thousand clicks. You can actually test some stuff. Yeah, and that, and, I'm, and I'm glad that you mentioned that whole test thing because typically we need at least ninety days to even get the kind of data that we need in PPC to be able to start really figuring it out for them. So I'm glad that you said that. Yeah, 100 conversions, quote unquote, conversion points is the what you would want during that time at least. And if you're only getting 100 visitors, you know, if you're killing it with 10% conversion, that's it's still really hard. And if you have multiple ad groups and multiple campaigns with lots of keywords that are driving that, I'm almost going to guarantee that by the 15th or 20th of every month, your campaigns are all done. Yeah. Well, unless you've really got it set to where you only get a couple clicks a day. 
And something else that I don't think, you know, some, some businesses, they don't, you know, figure out just the, the time that it takes to convert someone. I mean, I got some very interesting case studies. You know, we've, um, luckily Avalanche Media is a, is, you know, a lot of people say this, but we are actually a Google preferred partner. <laughs> um, but we work with them closely and, and they've, they've shown us some pretty interesting data on how many touch points before when someone initially does a Google search to like how many different touch points. And in this one particular industry, there was like 26 different touch points, things that they did before they actually converted. And that got me thinking about, you know, just some industries like we work with lawyers and a lot of times, again, if they're not an established law firm that has the kind of money to put forward to this, it's going to be hard for them to compete because you think about a personal injury lawyer, for example, we were having this conversation, they could be spending, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a month in PPC. Let's say we, we start driving them leads. That's great. We start, you know, getting them clients and business. Well, they'll sign on a client and they'll take on their case. Well, think about spending, you know, what's 20,000 in spend over a year? It was like, what, 240? 240. And so they're spending 240 grand in a year and they're probably not getting any money back or it's not seeing any money on any personal injury cases for a year. And yeah. so now, granted, one personal injury case that can make a millions, like it, it pays you know, it makes everyone happy, but you have to be able to sustain that for the year. Okay. And again, that's an extreme case, but it gives you an idea. Like, you know, you, you sometimes, you know, depending on your industry, you don't just flip on the ad and then, and then all of a sudden the conversions happen. It could take months. The buying process could take months with these people. And that's why I get so frustrated when people are like, Oh, like it, I worked with this group for like three months and it didn't work. I'm like, well, you didn't give them time. I, I did lead gen and I, I did the, uh, the PPC and we were spending um, five to 10 K a month. And it was the, the sales process was a year or two. Yeah. Like literally a year or two. So I, I worked with them for a year, year and a half. And so by the time I stopped working with them and they said something, you know, we transitioned to someone else to do it. I could have just been closing those sales. They had just started closing the ones that I generated a year ago. Wow, that's crazy. And we were doing a hundred leads or so every month for a year or two. Wow. And I'm sure they're still doing that many. Um, but the buying process, I mean, you're talking the low end, some of the equipment was 10 to 15 grand up to a couple hundred grand. Yeah. And so people would kind of kick tires and sometimes they needed it next month or this month. And sometimes it's, you know, for the type of equipment it is, they started shopping for next year or maybe for down the line. And, you know, they were just curious about what it was going to be or what they needed to start setting aside so that when they did buy it, how much of a loan do I need to take out? Well, and like you know, all that stuff. Yeah. And then we found similar thing, you know, like in the, uh, in the mattress industry, you know, in one of the uh, websites that I own is Wallabox.com, you know, a bed in the box type company, and and um, the the whole mattress buying process it, it takes, you know, if it's done right with retargeting, you know, you put an ad out there, you put a video or whatever, um, the, that process can take three weeks from the time that they do an initial memory foam search or bed in the box search or whatever it might be, um, and however many touch points in between. You know, three weeks later, after hitting them with, you know, the third or fourth retargeting campaign, they, you know, and you're finally hitting the dollar amount or the sell or whatever that they want, you know, but again, that's more to the point that you have to have the budget to be able to realize, okay, you're going to drive this traffic. It may not convert at first, but have everything else set up in place correctly so it can convert later on, but you have to have budget for that. And so, I mean, with, with me, I would say, you know, again, this you know, there's other people that you could talk to that kind of can, can consult you. Like you could pay for an hour of here's how to best spend your, you know, you could talk with someone that owns an agency that says, here's how to best spend your only $300 a month budget. But unless you're, you know, like with, with us, like with SEO, unless you have a $2,500 a month budget, at least, you know, your PPC, um, anywhere from a 1500 to $2,500 setup, 
15% management fee, you know, unless you have that kind of a budget or, you know, with any kind of content creation, you're looking, and, and again, decent content creation, visual content, um, you know, at least a few grand a, a month along with promotion, outreach, PR and whatnot. Um, it's just not going to work. Um, in, in my opinion, that's the kind of budget that people should be looking for before even talking to an agency. Now, again, I, I say that because, you know, I would be more than happy to talk to people and consult them and help them know, hey, look, you only have this much money per month to spend. Here's where I would put that money. And, and I'm more of the solo consultant, so I can I tend to work with, um, I love when people have that much money to spend on SEO, yes. but most people <laughs> don't. Or, and what we'll do, or what I'll do, and I think some other people do it, is they'll break up deliverables, and that's typically what I do, is I'll break up something. If you only have $1,000 a month, or 500 or, or 2000 a month, instead of doing one big audit, I break it up. Um, and that can, you know, so you can work with a consultant or an agency to say, hey, what if we spread it over six months and, you know, this is the budget and we did it over six months. You deliver something now, we'll pay you for two months, and then in the third month you deliver something else. And there's there are ways to work around a smaller budget. Um, the other thing, though, and Matt, you started to talk about it, when you're talking to a social media person or consultant, you know, an agency or consultant, or for SEO, or for PPC, I don't think most people think about the fact that you're gonna to need to pay someone either internally with time and you know salary, or externally to create content. Yep. Do you have a developer to make changes? If the PPC people need a landing page, can you do that? If not, you're gonna to have to pay them to do it, or they might not be able to work with you. As an SEO, Part of what we do is we rip apart your site and we make suggestions. If you can't do it, you'll need to pay someone to do it. And that can cost money. If you need new graphics or you need something cleaned up or if you need something for your social media people like content created or if they need visuals, that's outside of it. So when you're talking about someone in an agency, um, and I was actually just doing an outline about this, most people forget that they're going to need resources beyond from internal and possibly external to fulfill and to actually act upon whatever those recommendations are. Yeah, and, and that's what's tough because, I mean, how many people have we talked to after conferences that when we ask them, so are you, you know, the, the SEO? Yes. Are you the social media person? Yes. Are you basically the entire digital marketing team? Yes. And so like, that's tough because, you know, that's where, again, with a lot of the stuff that you, you just talked about and mentioned, you know, that's where this comes into play because a lot of these things that, that we do, like, you know, the, the landing pages alone, I mean, that, that's going to drive up the budget huge right there. And so I think even us just kind of helping people understand that, you know, there's so many other factors, you know, just the, with, you know, like with, with SEO in general, uh, again, going back to, you know how much m money a month as an agency we pay for tools? I mean, we're always trying to decide, well, do we need this tool or can we live without it? Oh, but this one client needs it, so we keep it. And so, you know, we pay thousands of dollars a month for just having access to tools that we can use that benefits those guys. I mean, those guys, you know, the, the paying for the tools that they need to do what they want alone would eat up all their budget, you know, the smaller ones. And so that's where having a, a, a smaller consultant or a solo firm like you or working with an agency, if you have the budget, does uh, benefit you. I don't, I don't know how much I pay to Majestics and Ravens and all sorts of animals eat up all my budget too. <laughs> but you see, it's more, more to the point. frogs that yell at me and stuff. <laughs> and we should, uh, you know, it'd be, it'd be good. We'll probably, uh, Go ahead and drop a lot of these tools that we use uh, in this episode. We'll we'll leave the links and let you go and see for yourself. I mean these these tools uh, are not cheap. They uh, they do not pay for themselves. And so anyway, um, yeah. I think that that's most are most, most are a hundred to two hundred dollars a month just on their own. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm saying you know yeah. you get you you get a few tools um, that's needed to to do what they want with you know let's just say SEO for example. 
that eats up someone that only has a $300 a month budget. So again, going back to the point of, is that the best, you know, spend for their money? I don't know. And that's where, um, if you have any questions about it, you know, reach out to Dave and I, this is where we'd love to tell you, Hey, that's something that we could take on. You know, I get lots of, of clients all the time. It might be a little bit, um, beyond our agency and, and or, or, you know, they just don't have the budget for our agency. And I have people like Dave, I have another, um, friend that does local that he takes on smaller budgets. And so, you know, and I know that Dave sometimes has clients that go beyond the scope of what he does. And he sends over to us say, Hey, use these guys for this particular thing. But the bottom line here is Dave and I, you know, we're here to help you and we want to answer any questions. So if you do have any questions about, you know, here's where my budget's at, this is what I can't afford. This is what I can't afford. Um, I would love to spend this money. You know, I need some help. I just don't want to be taken by anyone. Definitely reach out to us. Let us know how we can help. Yep. All right. Sounds good, guys. Um, for Dave Rohr, I'm at Northside Metrics. I'm Matt Soltel with Avalanche Media. Have a good day. Thank you for joining us on this uh, episode, this latest episode of our Business of Digital podcast. Bye-bye, guys.